Hello, I'm Cecilia Louie of Paper Zen. P is for poodle. In this video, I'll be showing you how to outline the letter P for a picture dictionary, the beehive technique, how to make outlining circles, and how to follow a freeform shape. If you'd like to give this poodle a try, download the free template from my blog. The link is down below in the notes. Let's get started. Whenever a letter has an inside shape, I always start quilling that part first. So we're going to leave this straight part alone and we're going to start curving the strip right around there, around the middle part. So instead of using my quilling needle, which has a smaller circumference, I'm actually going to use a crochet hook. Just to soften it, I find sometimes if I, I mean, I can soften with this quilling needle, but sometimes it's a bit too abrupt. I, I'm not sure how else to describe it, but, um, because it's such a larger circumference, I just feel more, it's smoother somehow. It's, it's up to you. It's not really a, you know, a have to do kind of thing. But I find when I rub, you know, a larger circumference around, around my finger like this, I can get a more gentle curve. So as usual, I'm going to put it against my template and just see how close I am to following my curve. So you can see right around here where I've got my ind my pointing finger here is where I need to tighten my curve just a bit more. So I'm going to pick it up and put my tool right there and just rub back and forth applying just a bit more pressure just to that curved area. And then I'll put it back down and you can see immediately how much more it's taken that shape. So it's only off by a little bit and I'm pretty sure that if I actually glued these two corners together it's actually not too far off the mark. And sometimes just fussing a little bit here and there will get it to where I need it to go. So I see it's, it's just a little bit um, looser there so I'm just going to give it just a gentle pressure because I find if you fix it all now before you go to glue, it'll make your life a lot easier. I think that's pretty much where I want it to be. So I'm going to glue these two corners together. And to do that, I'm just going to run a small bead of glue and kiss it with the very end of it. So we just get a little hairline of glue. Now I'm going to put the straight edge of my strip against the, the plastic piece of my card. It has just a little bit of a ridge here, so I'll be able to use it to hold my corner as I set it in place. This way, when I match up the curved piece to my straight edge, the corner will be perfectly aligned. Now we're going to work on the outside part of the letter P and similar to the inside shape, we're going to leave the straight part alone. And I just tend to put it up against the template to again, see where does the curve start happening? Because you don't want to just start curving things everywhere where it doesn't need a curve. We want to leave that straight part to be straight. So I'm going to pick it up and start softening right around here. And we can see it's tighter right there. So I'm going to pick it up. And the more you scrape your paper like this, the more it's going to take on a curve. And you can see it doesn't require too much for it to start bending to your will. In fact, I'm going to need to loosen it up a little because it's almost too curvy. And that's uh, pretty easy. You just gently widen it out a bit and it starts to behave. So again, I'm looking at my curve and I'm seeing I need to add a bit more curve right there.
I find making a coil relax, it's a bit like hair. It's actually harder for me to put my hair into curls and it easily relaxes back into straightness again way sooner than I would want. So I think that's pretty much there. It might take a little bit more massaging, but generally I like what I see. So this is just a simple matter of joining that corner when we actually go to glue the work surface. So why is it that I'm not gluing that corner like I did for the smaller piece? Because the smaller piece as a whole, it's really easy to pick it up with a pair of tweezers, dip it into the glue and put it into place. It's a lot harder because with the outline of the outer part, it's so wiggly, it's quite loose. So when you pick it up, it can kind of do its own thing. And so I find that there's more control if I just do one segment gluing at a time instead. And that way I have more control. Let's talk about making circles. I actually enjoy using this circle template that I got at Daiso for $2. It's a Japanese dollar store and just like any a typical template, it's a rather thin plastic. You'll see that I put some adhesive foam squares below it because I want to raise the template above my work surface because when I go to do my quilling, sometimes what happens is I touch it wrong and it'll just come flying out of my template. So this way, when I raise it up just a little bit from the work surface, it tends to fence all the elements in there and it gets contained a bit better. You could choose to use found objects at home. This Yoohoo glue stick lid is actually fairly close to the circle of the pom-pom here and if you happen to have a mandrel set, you could use the circle version in there. But what happens when you have an oval that is not the exact size of the mandrel? Then what do you do? So in this case, I'm not going to be using the mandrels. Let's start with the easiest circle first. That would be number seven. And we're going to need three of the same number sevens. So as you can see on the pattern, number seven, you need three pieces and the diameter of the circle is either, th either three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeter depending on which type of template you're using. Now remember the squiggly edge here is a representation for you to tear your ends so that when you see your circle it's not so blunt and it makes it a more smoother join. I'm going to take my crochet hook and just soften my paper And you can actually just kind of coil this part by hand and let it relax in the 19 millimeter circle. I'm going to pick it up with a pair of tweezers. And I'm just going to gently, before I do that, I'm just going to gently push the paper with my fingers to make sure that there's no air gap between those two layers. I'm just going to put it back into my template and using my tweezers I'm just going to gently bring out that inside piece and apply a bit of glue and with my tweezers I'm going to push the paper outward so as if I were expanding the circle so what that does is it forces any air gap that might be between those two rings to kind of seamlessly disappear. What do I mean by the air gap? Just, you know, because I'm not applying glue all around the entire inner ring so that the two rings are glued together. I just tend to do the two ends and personal preference really. But sometimes I find that when I don't do that, I can just see a hairline piece of air <laughs> between those two rings and I don't prefer that. So that's how I prefer to do my rings. 
we're just going to create two more. But if you don't have a circle template, well, and while it's still setting, I actually prefer to leave it inside the template so that it purely sets properly with that, you know, even perfect circle. So if you decide to use a glue stick lid to create your circle instead, just keep in mind that my template has been made generally, you know, you can fudge it. If you are wrapping it around your object, as you can see, the two ends don't quite meet up. So you just add that much more to your, to your strip. Add, take away, I mean, no one's really going to notice too much when you, if you overlap, it's not quite perfect, it's, it's quite all right. But if you're going to use the lid to create your circle, and this would be the same for a mandrel. I would just add, you know, some glue right there. And actually for, for me, I prefer to add glue all around. So I start with the glue here and then I line the outer edge up so that it's nice and even. And then as I go, that's when I keep adding glue until I reach the end. And then I'll gently take it off my form and put it on my work surface and just push down those coils while the glue is still wet. And then while it's still wet, you gotta work fast, like not super fast, but you know, don't let, don't let it just sit and dry. Put it back on the form so that it cures and dries fully with this form intact. So it's the same idea as this, except you have a shape in the middle and you're doing it on the outside. In this case, you're doing it within the inside. I prefer this way because you know, no matter how much I've tried, somehow I seem to get a hint of an air gap all around this form. No matter how much I try to, you know, pull here to get it to be as tight as I can, I just find I somehow work more for this method than this method. Try both yourself and see which one works best for you. So let's work on the oval next. That would be piece number one. And just as I did with number seven, I'm just going to soften the strip and coil it up by hand and put it into my template. I'm going to be using the 28 millimeter circle. Take it up, apply some glue to set the outer ring. And I'm just gonna put it back into my template to make sure that my circle stays intact. and set the inner circle. And again, I'm just pushing, gently pushing the inner circle outward so that I close up any air gaps. And I'm just going to let that set now. Now, while this is drying, I'm just going to explain this is a key time to look at the design and determine where do I want to hide that seam. You never want to put the seam on the outside. So I think I'm going to hide it best here so that no one can see that seam. So I'm just going to rub the seam area just gently because my glue is still somewhat wet but I'm a little impatient and I'm just going to gently soften just that area and do it to the same thing to the opposite side. And we're almost there. And just remember, it doesn't have to match exactly. This is just a guide. So don't worry that it's not exactly matching. I don't know if I'm telling you or me actually. <laughs> and 
it's generally there. It's, you know, if it's off a little bit, it's not going to be noticeable really by anyone except us, right? I think I can be okay with that. Now in the case of the larger circle, number six, you can see here my paper wasn't long enough to make it all on one strip. So that's what this means is to continue it on to here. And you can see that this end is cut and I guess what I should have shown was actually a, a wavy line to show that I'm tearing it there. So I looked all around my house and I found that this glue bottle was generally right size. So hopefully you can find something similar in your household. So just as I explained with the other technique using the glue stick cap, I'm going to be wrapping it around here. So I'm just going to soften my strip and I'm going to put the torn edge down first against my glue bottle. And just apply a dab of glue and line up my strip. And I'm just going to make sure that I apply glue right to the very end. And I can see here, do you see how that tab is just sticking up? So I'm just going to make sure that it's all perfectly even by sliding it off and just gently pressing while my glue is still wet. And just put it back on. Because I wanna make sure that it's going to be a seamless, you know, join to my gluing surface when I'm done. So finding that blunt end again, I'm going to put the blunt end of this next strip right up against there and continue it on. Try to make it as seamless as I can. And sometimes what I'll do is I, I actually use the end to smear the glue and that way I know the glue has reached to the very tip of that. And again, you can slide it off. Just make sure any edges are lining up. And then we could just apply glue. In this case, I'm going to apply glue all around to the entire strip because I want to make sure that there's no air gap. And I want to work fairly fast because again, I want to slip this off and press those edges even. Okay, we'll let that set properly, but we've finished our circles. So now I'm going to show you how to do the beehive technique to fill the circle. I tend to, again, I just tend to like to pre-soften my paper. And because I'm using Canson Mitant paper, it tends to be thicker, so it really benefits from doing that. So I'm just going to put the end of my strip on my knuckle here, and I'm going to be looking at this segment here. So I'm going to put my tool about midway down my knuckle and start turning. And as you see it gather into that little circle, 
that's your first coil. So I'm going to let that coil sit right at the end of my knuckle or my fingertip here and insert the tool midway down my knuckle again and coil it again. So again I'm just going to leave that there and repeat. And as you can see the coils start adding up rather quickly. So now that these are finished coiling, I can put it inside my circle. Now, because this paper is so thick, I am needing to use a larger slotted tool like this. And if you're planning on using a regular strip of quilling paper, you might want to use a smaller tool because it's going to create a finer effect. You can use obviously a larger tool for standard quilling paper, but you'll get a different type of circle here. So let's give you a try and, and give you a look at how that's going to turn out. So let's see these two side by side and compare. So these coils here are done with the smaller tool and then these quills here are done with the larger so you can determine which one you prefer to use. So I finished all the beehives for the smaller circles and I'm just going to pause for the larger circle and my oval. Because these are larger shapes I want to glue them to my final work surface and then do the beehive and fill it in and add the beehive pattern within these two shapes separately from the outer ring. And the reason why is because these are smaller, they're okay to corral the amount of beehive that is in there, but I suspect because these two are larger, there's going to be more resistance to want to bound out of there, and I don't want it to ruin these two shapes which I took the effort to make so perfect, right? So if I glue these two shapes down to my final work surface, they won't move and that way I can put in the beehive and not worry about it changing. Okay, so we'll go on to the next step from here. So now we're ready for the freeform part of this design and even though I've numbered the components from top to bottom, I'm actually going to be showing you how to form them from the bottom up because I realized after studying it the shapes are actually going from the easiest down and then working its way up to the hardest, which is the shape of number two. So let's start from the bottom, okay? So for the pause, I'm going to be using the regular needle tool and I'm going to soften my strip because I can see the whole design is quite soft. There's no straight edges. And I'm just going to rub here to create you know that that part right there and and do you see how there's these two that are the two ends that are kind of tapering together so what I'm going to do is put those two ends together and use my crochet hook and just gently caress them into shape and then of course we just you know, I, I want to have like more of a toe area, so I'm just going to accentuate that part. And remember, it is it is you know a a guide. You, you it doesn't have to match exactly. So I don't want this to be an exercise in frustration for you. 
don't think that you have to follow it to a T because that's going to end up ruining your enjoyment of this craft. So it's basically the same. I'm going to move on to number 11 now. And those ones are pretty straightforward, right? We just mainly soften, and I'm gonna soften both sides, but one side is more so than another for the hind part of the foreleg. Shape number 10 is kind of kind of an S shape and but you know it's got a little bit of a kink in it. So I'm just going to soften one end, turn it around and soften the other end. And anytime like I okay, I realize oh, I should have kept that part straight. It's not a big deal. You just kind of soften it the other way around. And so I just need to rub that part a little bit more. Nine, I'm just going to pre-soften as an S shape as well. I'm going to soften the rump just a little bit more. Some strips, you know, it, it, it just kind of comes into place really quickly. Some of them, you know, you just kind of have to work at it a little bit more. But nine was pretty simple, wasn't it? Okay, now eight has a dotted line in the middle of it, and that means to fold in half. And then add a dot, some glue to... Basically, we're just thickening the strip so that it's a little bit easier to handle, a little bit easier to stand up in, in place. So we just want to add that curve in there while the glue is wet. And that basically follows that line. Okay, so now five is pretty simple, isn't it? It's all downhill from there. Now that you've done all that, that's pretty simple. 
and you can just change up his expression any which way you want. Remember, it doesn't have to be exact. And then three is a simple curve around, well, it just happens to fit quite well around my crochet hook. So that'll be close enough. Now for four, it just happens to go around my toothpick rather well. So I'm just going to soften that up. And I'm just going to press the toothpick into my finger and ravel that up. So t quite tightly. I guess you could have torn that edge if you wanted, but I figure I can hide it against that corner so no one's really going to see that join anyway. So not a big deal. And we slip that out and I'm just going to gently press it into a triangle with my fingers. Probably would have benefited to let it dry completely, but so that'll be right there. Now for the hardest shape, as I promised you. Okay, I'm just going to clear the decks. So I don't see any straight sides and I'm just going to soften the entire thing. And just slow, be slow about this. So this is not quite so easy as the rest and just realize that you've done all this work up to now. This is the last piece and so it's, it's going to be good. So we're following the head and we want to follow this shape. So I'm going to soften a bit more there. And then we want to come in the opposite direction. So I'm going to grab the strip and start softening gently the other way. Okay, so now we've come to his nose and we're going to just basically rub very concentratingly right there. So I'm just, it's, you know, a more concentrated rub just to give it that little bit sharper corner. Getting there, but a little off the mark. So I'll just move it over and rub again. And with my fingers, I'm just going to, you know, adjust where that location of that corner rub is. So I can see I've overshot the corner just a little bit. Not a big deal. Because basically the pulp is, when you're conditioning it, it it's kind of it kind of becomes more malleable. So you can almost just by your fingers alone ask it to change direction. 
just subtly, right? There's only so much you can ask it to do and then it just becomes unruly. So now I'm following this curve and I'm going to start bringing that guy back down for his, his neck. Not too bad. I think that'll be okay. When I go to glue, I can just position it just where I need it to go. Okay, let's get to gluing to our final surface. Now, before we begin, I tend to look at this design and study which element do I want to glue to my final surface first. I think generally speaking, I would want to do the letter first because it tends to be so exacting, I guess, and I don't want anything in my way. If I need to rotate this page, I can still be free to do so and nothing is going to be in my way. Then when it comes to the poodle, I would think that I would want to do these larger elements first, these circles, and then finally the loose lines. And why would I choose that? Uh, mainly it's because these elements, I guess you can't fudge them so much. If you had glued these lines and you realized, oh, you're a little tight here, it's hard to move that around. Whereas if you put these guys down first and this needs to move over just a little bit, it's not a big deal. No one's going to know and you don't have to fudge s quite so much with a line. So I hope that makes sense. I always start with the inside shape first, so I'm going to set the outside shape aside for now. I have three types of plastic here. This card here is very stiff, and I'm just going to use that as a ruler so I can help this straight edge stay quite straight. And even though it is, I didn't bend it or anything, it can still kind of waver, so I'd rather have something help guide my strip to be as straight as I can. So I have removable tape here and I'm just going to set that in place now. Now this card here is a very thin plastic and I'm going to put some glue on there using Aline's original tacky glue. I'm just going to start with a bead here. And this card here is simply to help smear this stream flat. This is so that there's no excess glue that comes up the side of your strip. We never want to show that part. And we just make sure we press on all the edges to make sure it's all coated. It's a bit like playing Operation. You realize you've been holding your breath this whole time. So I'm just going to apply glue just on this first edge. And then now I'm going to lift up my strip and apply more glue.
And then for these last two edges, I'm just going to apply glue to both of them at the same time. And because the oyster card is here, it's going to help this piece here align with this piece there. And then I'm going to just take up a little bit of glue on my needle and just apply a little bit on that edge and then join those two corners. Just use the, the side of your needle to help burnish that corner. Now just remember when you pick up your circle, look for that seam and try to hide it as much as you can. So in this case, I'll be hiding the tail right where that curved section meets up with it so you're not seeing it. Because when a person is looking at this design, they're going to be able to see this part of the tail most. So I'm just going to dip it the whole thing in and technically speaking, these two pieces are actually separate. So when I go to pick up, you know, if it comes apart, just try to pick up the whole thing at one time. So just make sure when you press down into the glue that you press evenly and then you press evenly on your surface here. Now I want to make sure I clear an area for this circle because by the time I go to you know move it around and stuff it's it's likely going to smear my work surface and my piece of wood here is actually a laminate so it's easy for me to remove my glue but for you, just make sure that you know, you're know you protecting your final work surface. So as I've mentioned before, now that these two shapes are down and they're not going to move, I can easily fill them in with the beehive and the shape will still stay good. So with this hand, I'm keeping this part up and securing one half of it first. Now for something like this, I just tend to want to put it into place and make sure is this how I want it? Do I want to change the you know angle or anything? Predetermine that before you have it with glue. And in this case, I want to hide that seam against that corner. And then same with his or her smile. I just want to make sure is that the expression I want before I go to glue it down. And then finally, before the glue fully dries, I just want to roll up a little bit on the edge and just go in and for any of these areas that are touching, just, you know, run a bead of glue in between those areas and it'll make your design stronger. And now finally we can start doing the rest of the beehive to put into these empty spots. Now when it comes to gluing your larger pieces of beehive in place, I have found that like even though you could do one portion at a time, if I find that I enjoy these coils the way that they're sitting the way that they are and then I go to lift that piece up to get it ready for gluing, I find it springs out of place and stuff so you know if and then you know, when you're trying to put it back in, you're wondering, oh, how did that fit just so perfectly again? It's up to you, but I actually, what I did was take my quilling tool and dip it in 
a little bit of glue puddle and slip it in between any areas that touched and then basically solidified it into one piece. So now when I lift this guy up, he's, he, I think there's about three pieces in him and I actually lost count of how many were in here. But this to me is an easier process because then I can just go to dip it into my puddle and you know most of it's already in place. So when you do go to, if you're going to do it this way and you want to put it back into this circle, just make sure that you scrunch it smaller than your circle so that any glue that's here is not going to smear your ring and get that dirty. Okay, so good luck with your gluing. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give it two thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified of new videos. I love reading your responses because I never thought so many would enjoy hearing my inside thoughts. So thank you. Your comments are keeping me going.